The hydraulic analogy for a capacitor is a dam. A dam consists of two plates, if you want, two surfaces, one towards the upper part of the water, holding the water back, and the other one shielding the village down in the valley from the water up on the mountain. Now the plates can have different sizes. So a small dam is rather a small capacitor and they can have different thicknesses. So the closer they are, the weaker the dam is to keep the water away from the village. The water pressure pressing on one of those plates from the mountainside is equivalent to the voltage across a capacitor. The remaining current flowing through the dam is equivalent to the electrical current in a capacitor. Now let's look at the nomenclature of the physical symbols behind capacitors first. There are the charges inside the capacitor, and then there is the surface, which is representing the surface of the plates, so the size of one of the plates. You have the electrical field from one plate to the other, which is represented by electrical field vectors from the positive to the negative plate. Those field vectors are penetrating an area. So they go through the area in between. And that is the area sigma along the closed area pass A that we are integrating the displacement field along. This is defined by Gauss law. Now we've met one of Faraday's law already in conjunction with the magnetics. And here is its other law. The other Faraday law says that the voltage is equal to the electrical field integrated along a path. And in this case, it's the path, the closed path from one plate to another. So it's the, basically along the length of the electrical field lines, which could be straight, but could also be bent from one plate to the other. And the further you get out to the outside of the plates, so for example, where my thumbs are from those two plates here, the more the electrical field lines would bend over to the other plate, and the more in the center you are, the more straight they would go from one plate to the other. The electrical symbol of a capacitor is shown down here. With the current through the capacitor as a function of time noted in green here, and the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time and its polarity noted in red here. Note that the arrows are both pointing the same way. That means for both the voltage and the current, positive is defined over here and negative is on this side of the capacitor. Having an equation for the charge and for the voltage, we can use Ohm's law across the capacitor to connect the physical laws from Gauss and Faraday to the capacitors. Furthermore, we need to take into account that the current is the time derivative of the charges. That means that the numerator is both the integral over time and the derivative over time, which leads to the definition of the capacitance as charge per volts. That means how many electrical charges can you store per volt in a capacitor? Taking in Gauss law, from the last slide, as well as the derived Faraday's law here, we can rewrite the equation for the capacitance as its material dependency epsilon, which is the relation of the displacement field and the electrical field, often represented by the permittivity epsilon here, and the geometry of the capacitor. To use the equivalent picture of a dam in the hydraulics notation, epsilon would be a representative for the strength of the concrete used between the walls of the dam. So a stronger concrete would allow us to uh, 
put more water pressure, more volts across the dam. And the size of both of the dam surfaces would be equivalent to the geometry of the plates of the capacitor. And the width of the dam would be equivalent to the distance of the plates of the capacitor. Finally, all of these insights are summed up down here in the practical equations used in electrical engineering. Now let's apply a cosinusoidal voltage as a test signal across our capacitor. It has an arbitrary phase V and an amplitude called Vc. That means that the current is the derivative of this voltage multiplied with the capacitance according to Ohm's law. The derivative of a cosinusoidal waveform is a sinusoidal waveform with a minus in front of it. And furthermore, multiplied with the derivation of the argument of the original cosinusoid, which is only omega here. The capacitance is carried over from the left-hand side of the equation, and we also carry along the amplitude of the voltage of the original test signal. Finally, we can rewrite the minus sine wave here as a positive cosinusoidal waveform by shifting its phase by a factor of 90 degrees. Rewriting the time dependent cosinusoidal voltage waveform into a phase notation results in the phasor of the voltage down here plus the extra information to represent the original signal. As we did above, we can also in the phasor domain apply Ohm's law across the capacitor to derive the current flowing through that capacitor. In this case, the time derivative applied in the phasor form here only applies to the exponential function with the argument of j omega t. All the other parameters are time independent and therefore the time derivative does not change them. The time derivative of the exponential function with j omega t is the function itself times the multiplication of the derivative of the argument, which is j omega here. We can rewrite the imaginary number j as an exponential function with the argument j and 90 degrees by itself. And we can sum those together with the phase expression remaining from the current phase. Summing up into J times the parenthesis around V plus the 90 degrees. So in phase notation, we have the voltage across the capacitor here and the current across the capacitor represented here and shortened down to this part. Cutting off the extra information that we are not carrying along when we are calculating the phasers, that is the operation of the real part and the multiplication with E powered by J omega T, leads to Ohm's law applied to the capacitor in phasor notation here in equation 40. Hereby, the impedance of the capacitor can be abbreviated as Z underscore C, which is 1 over J omega C. Writing Ohm's law applied to a capacitor like this in the phase domain includes the division with the factor of J omega in the phase domain, which indicates uh, the integration over time in the time domain. So the voltage as a function of time is one divided by the capacitance times the integration of the current of the capacitor over time. Finally, we can represent the voltage across the capacitor and the current through that capacitor 
in the time domain and in the phase domain graphically. The voltage is a cosinusoidal waveform with an arbitrary phase V. So its starting point is arbitrarily defined, where the phase V can be read as the distance between the maximum, which is the normal starting point of a cosinusoidal waveform, and zero on the time axis. Or in the phasor domain, this angle shows up here as the angle between the voltage phasor and the real axis. The current already crossed zero here, whereas the voltage crosses the zero line 90 degrees later or a quarter of the period time t later in time. Also, when viewing the phasor diagram as something that is circling, the current was already here and made it already 90 degrees ahead in time compared to the voltage, which first crosses the angle phi here, 90 degrees after the current. The amplitude of the waveform in the time domain is represented by the length of the vector in the phasor domain for both the voltage and the current. Now it's your time to practice your skill on components. For two unknown components, we can see the voltage across them and the current through them in terms of volts and milliampere on the left-hand side and same here on the right-hand side. What is the value of the component? And through the unit, you can also reveal what kind of component it is. Furthermore, we have the current waveform through a 10 nanofarad capacitor. We have the information that the voltage has an offset or a starting point of minus five volts. And the question is, what is the voltage across that capacitor at time five microseconds, where the current has its peak of 20 milliamps at 10 microseconds, where the current through the capacitor is ramping back to zero, and then later on at 20 microseconds. 